uh, astronomy, and we have space technology. So under space technology, you can have something like satellites, you can have rocket science. However, those are very interesting views, but my projects are based on space science or astronomy. So in space science or astronomy, we study celestial bodies. We use science to study celestial bodies. For instance, we use physics. All the principles we know in physics, we apply them to celestial bodies. So that is the study of, uh, of <coughs> space objects. We call them astrophysics. So we study planetary bodies. We study deep sky objects. So under our project, the first project we have is the Pan-African Asteroid Research Campaign. So under this project, we, we work with different universities across Africa to initiate uh, this uh, project. This project that I'm promoting does not necessarily need uh, experts. In fact, any, anybody can do them. <coughs> anybody. <coughs> so far, you have interest in space science, you can do them. They are quite simple. And they are very fulfilling. Also, I, we promote uh, space competition in our organizations and space arts. We are not the ones producing these data or materials, but we are superheading the organizations that are running it in the world. So we are actually bringing these activities here in Africa. We are connecting with every person in Africa that has, you know, connection with students so that they can engage their students with these activities. And here is just one part, the first part of our project. So, but before we, we delve into each of them, first of all, what is an asteroid? And what is an asteroid research? Why should we even do this? So this is the map of our solar system. And here you will see different orbits of different planets. So these white ones are the orbits of the inner planets. This red one is called the asteroid belt. This is where you have most of the asteroids. And this is the yellow orbits are the orbits of the larger or outer planets like Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune. So those yellow concentric circles of the orbits. Then we have the Kuiper belt. But for the reason, for the purpose of what we are doing today is on the main belt asteroids. Because that is the home. That is where you have most of these asteroids. You see this asteroid orbiting there. Now there are billions of asteroids. Billions in theory. Uh, but we have only discovered about a million of them. And we are working to discover more. And we are involving many people to come in to discover. And one good thing about it is that whatever you discover becomes yours. If you discover an asteroid, you can name it after you. Or if your student discover an asteroid, they can name it. They can even make some publications on their work. So now, why do we search for this asteroid? The reason why we search for this asteroid is because they can be dangerous. And how can they be dangerous? They can be dangerous in the sense that from time to time, they collide with themselves. And when they collide with themselves, they are orbit about the, the, the solar system or the, the Kuiper belt changes. So you can imagine that you are driving your car and a bike just comes from nowhere and crisscrosses your path. I think that is quite dangerous, right? I hope that is dangerous. Yes, it's dangerous. Yes. So you can imagine that you are riding, you are driving your car, another vehicle or another bike just carelessly crisscrosses you. It is very dangerous. 
Now, let me now show you why asteroids are very dangerous to Earth. When they, cri- when they crisscross our orbits, they can be attracted by the Earth's gravitational field, so they can fall towards Earth. And when they fall towards Earth, they can destroy a whole city. They are quite large. They range from 100 meters, sorry, from 1 meters to 1 kilometer. So they are large, and they come in with high kinetic energy. So they can destroy a whole city or part of a large city. So that is why it is very dangerous. And why we are involving ordinary people, undergraduates, postgraduates, everyone to get involved into asteroid research. So here are the orbits of the asteroid that we have discovered so far since we started to hunt for asteroids. And the contributions are mostly made from citizen scientists, ordinary people, not even experts. They are the major contributors to this. And we Africans, we have discovered for the past two years we have been into this research, we have discovered just 25 of them out of, out of 1 million. We have discovered 25. So, but we are trying our best. We are recruiting more students to join us in the search. It is a very exciting project, not just for those in Australia, but for ordinary people. So, you must have heard what happened to the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs weren't extinct because there was, there, there, were no, there was no space project. They didn't have any space project to track these dangerous asteroids. So, they were living their normal life, living their normal innocent lives. One day, asteroids came and consumed all of them. They all died and perished. This happened 66 million years ago. So, in the recent times, we had asteroid impact in Russia. This happened in Russia in 1908. So, you can imagine the, the big, how big this crater is. It created a very huge crater here. If you were to stand there, you appear very, very small, like a, a pinch of salt or a little object out of the whole size. So, you can imagine <coughs> how impactful this asteroid is. And once it is landing, it lands with the energy of an atomic bomb. So of recent, this happened in Russia again in 2013. So this is the animation here. This is the animation. So it landed. You can see the brightness. It has shines the sun. It this happened in the daytime, and when it landed, it has shines the sun. And if you were mistakenly looking at it at that moment, it can cause you some blindness. So it is quite dangerous. But luckily, it didn't land on the. It didn't fall on the land. It fell inside the ocean. But the shock wave caused damages to buildings. It destroyed buildings worth billions of dollars. So since this happened, before this happened, there were no, there were no surveys. There were no dedicated telescopes scanning the sky for these uh, dangerous asteroids. But after it happened, there was a call by the United Nations for, for, for to create awareness of the dangers of asteroids in our planet. So, so since that time till now, there has been a number of surveys, a number of telescopes. You can imagine them like as security cameras mounted as strategic points on Earth, constantly uh, scanning the sky to monitor these asteroids to know when or uh, what we pose danger to our lives on Earth. So you can see different countries have their own programs. Space Watch, this is for Japanese, near Earth. Most of them are for the Americans. However, they give out the data to the public to use. The ones that we use are from the Penn Stars. The Penn Stars. 
Here is the fan stars. It is constantly scanning the sky at different times, taking data of these asteroids. And after collecting data of these asteroids, they are sent to these people, the Isaac International Astronomical Search Collaboration. So this organization is responsible for distributing the data to different organizations, different universities across the world. So for the past two years, we, the African group, have been very active in this activity. We have been very active in, in the search for asteroids. Like I've told you before, we have discovered just 25 of these asteroids. So, let me just show you a video of our last concluded program on asteroid search. This is Welcome to Open African Asteroid Search Campaign. And you will see the different countries, different universities of different countries participating in this research, including far, uh, four space agencies. So that is why we haven't had participants from Burundi before. And I'm glad that, I'm glad for crossing paths with you. And I hope your students will be partaking in the project. So this is not the only project that we are promoting. We also have um, other ones, but I'll come back to this. So here are the requirements. You must have a computer, Windows operating system. However, if you have Linux or a Macintosh, we have a way to convert it so that you can use it for, your, for our program. You need a good internet connection. You need a time commitment of at least four hours per week. You can, it is not a project that you do every day. You can just allocate a special time of the week to run the project. There are a minimum of three people to start. Okay? There's no maximum, but to start, you need a minimum of uh, three people. And we want to start with your colleagues, your fellow teachers fellow researchers, they have to get acquainted to the project before we can now include the students. And the next project is coming up on August, and by then, I might be having another meeting with your team so that we can arrange for the training. However, if it may not be possible, we have uh, recorded uh, tutorials on, on how to use the software for the research. It is, a, it is a very simple process, and it is very fun and very fulfilling. Then another project that we promote is the international competition. It runs yearly from February to June. The one for this year is coming to an end on the 20th of this month. And I know that your students might be very interested to participate. So, there are three levels. We have the qualification round, we have the pre-final round, and the final round. So, if you make it, if you pass the qualification round, you will be automatically qualified to participate in the pre-final round. And the same thing for the final round. There are two categories. We have under 18, and we have above 18. So, there is something for everyone. So, depending, no matter what, the, the level they want to register for, they will receive their certificate of participation. And depending on the performance, if they were able to get to the first, they will win a, a cash prize of $150, $100 for second prize, and $50 for third prize. I'm actually an ambassador for this organization. And later on, I'm going to send you the link to their website, you can go there and download the past questions. You can even distribute it to your students so that they can better prepare themselves for next year competition. It is actually a very, very fulfilling project. Another project that I'm, pro I'm promoting in Africa is space art. You know, it is very good to start 
you know, stimulating the minds of our younger ones, the children, about STEM. We use this space project to stimulate their minds in order for them to appreciate and to understand STEM. Maybe they might venture into STEM in the future. So these are some of the arts that I've collected from some of our students. Popio, sorry. I got it from organizations promoting, um, promoting the project in Nigeria because I'm in charge of the project in Africa. So when I collect the, the arts from them, I will send it to uh, the boss. I will send it to, bo to the, our boss. So, and I'm going to show you what we do with these pictures. But before I do that, you can imagine what a little girl did. She said, this is what she thinks about space. She said she wants to be the first Nigerian that will go to space. And when she gets to space, she would like to mount the flag of Nigeria on top of the moon. So you can imagine how they feel about space. So this project gives them the opportunity to express their feeling about space so that they start getting acquainted to celestial objects, the science behind the celestial objects. So the reason why I'm approaching university groups is because they have links to secondary schools in their country. And these secondary schools might be very, or primary schools might be very interested in this project. So or a yearly, we have a call where we receive these photos and you will send them to astronaut Nicole Stott. This is astronaut Nicole Stott. She is a retired NASA astronaut. Right now, she's spending the rest of her life promoting space science all around the world. She's traveling from one country to the other, promoting space science through space arts. So this are, so after this, the kids must have designed the arts, we send it to her through her email. So through her email, she will receive it and she will use it to build the space suit. And after building the space suit, the, the suit will be sent to space, to the International Space Station. This is the picture of what the International Space Station looks like. It is actually a very big facility where astronauts uh, live uh, for six months at least to carry out their research. So you can see an astronaut wearing the spacesuit. So I want Burundi kids to be a part of this exercise. It is a very fulfilling exercise. Then the second project which we concern students in the physics department is this, image processing. We teach them how to process their images. These are telescopes. This is called the Hubble Space Telescope. This is the James Webb Space Telescope. And this is the Las Gambas Observatory. It's a telescope. But these two are space telescopes. Why this is a ground-based telescope? Why do I have to mention this? Now, these telescopes collect images of deep sky objects. They collect images of deep sky objects every now and then. Now, when they collect images from deep sky objects, you have to process those images to bring out the beauty in them. Let me explain what I mean by processing your images. This is your normal smartphone. This is the normal camera you have around. You can carry it around. And this is the image I took, a selfie of me, I took with my smartphone. Now, as soon as I took my picture, I took a selfie with my smartphone. I was able to see my face. I was able to see the color of my tie. And these are true. These are very true. And you can agree with me on this matter. Now, for this space telescope, I have just shown you, or the ground-based space telescope, after taking images of deep sky objects like planets or galaxies or stars, this is how they look like. 
they are not really impressive. So, what do we do? We process the what? The images. If you process the images, you bring out the beauty. Because this thing is a data. This is called FITFI. Flexible Image Transport System. It has collected the data and are buried inside the file. So we're going to use, we're going to train you on how to use special softwares to extract the data and to produce beautiful images. And let me show you some examples of these beautiful images. You can see some examples of these beautiful images here. This is, these are galaxies. So I was a person that produced this. So, so this is what we do. When the space telescope collects the data, the images, it is the job of the astronomer, of the space scientist, to process them to produce what? Beautiful images. And we want to train your students on how to do that. This is what anybody can do. Anybody. But we're going to start with physics students. Maybe undergraduate or postgraduates. And this is a very important skill in space science. So... After you must have passed through this project too, we now give you a, an account where you can schedule your own missions of your choice. Maybe you want to do research, we will give you an account to conduct research of any object you want. And we will even train you on some of these softwares to be used for research. So, we have the Los Campos Observatory and the and the slew. And these are web telescopes. Web telescopes are telescopes you do not need to be there with them. You can operate them from your office, from your classroom. So far you have an account. You can always log in and use your computer to control the telescope. And the last but not the least of what I want to tell you is about this telescope. I want to get it for your department. I want to get it for your department. So, with it, you can use it to, you know, inspire your students. You know, depending on the days you, 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 you map out, you can, you can come outside and use the telescope to view sky images like the moon or the planets. And I'm going to give you the telescope for free. I am working with Mr. Jim, and he distributes these telescopes to deserving groups across Africa. And I think that your group might need one. So this is the end of what I want to talk. And I would like to entertain your questions. All right. You can ask me your questions. So I hope you got all the information that I delivered. Yes, I got you. You were telling me about the image processing project. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. You, you can go on. I just I have finished presenting. Or where did you, where did you, where did you last hear what I said? Yeah, you are showing me the image you get after doing the image processing about the galaxy. Okay. Did you hear the part I said um, we're going to give your school a telescope? No, like, no, no, no. Oh. I didn't hear that. Okay, let me... All right, let me start from there. Let me, let me start from there. Yeah. Okay. So, so after processing the images with special computer programs, these are the results you would get. Remember that the image that I processed here, I wasn't the person that scheduled the mission. 
The mission okay. was scheduled by NASA scientists. We just go to their website, download the data, and process them to produce these beautiful images. But in our third project, we're going to assign an account to your university, to your students, and to your, to your, to your group. We're going to assign an account to your group. So with the account, we're going to teach you how to schedule observations with these web telescopes. We're going to teach you how to schedule observations with these web telescopes you know, to capture images and also to read up the data in the, in, the, in the files. So, and I ended by saying that I would like to donate a telescope to your department, this kind of telescope. It is a portable telescope uh, you can keep in your department. And from time to time, you can use it to educate the student about solar systems and celestial objects. So you can see some of these students here. They come outside, whether in the daytime or nighttime, they will use the telescope to, to pierce deeper into the, into the night sky or the day to, to look at the moon in a very clearer form. And I work with Jim. He's the one that is in charge of distributing the telescopes. So... I'm going to send you his email. I'm going to tell you how you're going to prepare the proposal um, so that he will know how serious you are and uh, where you belong because he loves to work with university groups and, uh, and underrepresented groups in Africa. So that is the end of my presentation. So that is the end of my presentation. So... I don't know if you have any questions. I'd like to entertain questions. Okay. The, so for the first... Can you get me? Yes, I can hear you. Go on. Yeah, you said for the first project we need uh, about a group of three people. I yes, think. yes, three people. In fact, all the projects you need a, a group, yes. students, you need a group. But for okay. the first project, uh, I usually start uh, engaging groups from the first project. So after the first project, when we stabilize on that one, we we'll go over to the second project. Uh -huh. We we'll go over to the third project. Yeah, that's how it's going to do. Yeah, but if I get it correctly, you say that we we do it by August. Yes, by August. So before then, we're going to arrange for a training, a special training mm -hmm. with your students, or maybe if if that may not be possible, we have a guide that have prepared some serious guide, you know, by watching the videos, you can understand the whole process. So, so depending on the one you prefer, I'm ready for two. I will give you, I will send you the YouTube link to the guide or we prepare a training, we train on how to use the software. Okay. So, I, I have already, I have already three people, but uh, the three people, they are not uh, students. And I think we still can start by not. Yes, uh, our teachers, uh, the teachers, the teachers can start with that. Yeah. Great. So for this, uh, that's what I got, and it is interesting. And for the second, uh, which is the space competition. Yeah, the space competition has actually ended, but it's going to come up next year, and when it comes, on, I'm going to communicate to you. Okay, I see. But for this, we need to prepare ourselves for next yes. year. Yeah, I'm going to send you a link. You go to their website, you download their questions to see the nature, so you can better prepare yourself for next year. Yes. I see. And for the space arts, 
which I uh, saw that is very interesting. Yeah. And, uh, when can we start for this? Anytime you are ready, we are. You can start anytime you are ready. Hold on, let me check my settings. My settings is not all right. Okay, sorry. My camera disconnected, so. Video. Okay. All right. So, we can start any time. We can start this weekend for the train because the major thing is the training. When the program starts, we can take off easily. But the major thing is the training. So we can start anytime, maybe tomorrow or weekend, anytime. Yeah. Uh, I come back for the first project. You said yeah, like, we need four hours per week. Yeah, that is when you have learned it. Like, okay. assuming that you have learned it, yes. But when you are still learning, when we have the meeting, it can just take only two hours. Then, after the meeting, after the training, you have to practice it on your own to master how to do it independently. So that might take you extra time, but once you are good with the software, four hours is too much. So I'm just saying, at most, four hours. So you will get the data, you analyze the data, you submit it back to the Isaac website for further studies and to confirm your results. And then what is the outcome for this project? Like the first one, we got to get papers, we get articles, or? What did you say? I didn't hear what you said last. Sorry? Yeah, I didn't get your last question. Yeah, I said the, the outcome, like if someone, if the group wants to join the, the project, what they're going to benefit? They're, they're going to get education. Okay. It's actually uh, a tool that, you know, they're going to acquire some research skills because they're going to be working with real data, real and new data. So they're going to, be, they're going to learn how to work with scientific data, how to analyze data. So it's actually a research skill. And they will also learn how to use that software because in astronomy, we work with software. Okay, most astronomers, they stay in their, in their labs, in their offices, and work with software. You barely see an astronomer going out for observations. They just stay in their office, use software to do their research and get their results. So they will acquire research skills with real data and also with software. And by the end of the day, they might make a discovery which they will name after themselves. It becomes part of their work. And also, they will get a certificate by the end. So, that's it. And how about the funding? Where do you get the funding? Like, you have more investment than Okay. Like um, conference. Well, right now, we do not have a funding, but we have written for funds. <laughs> but, you know, for right now, we are just communicating to schools Maybe if they have their own funding, they can execute the project because it does not really cost anything. It is a free. Like, it is free. This, you don't have to register with money. You register your students. They part participate. You get the data free of charge. So no one is going to charge you for the, for, the, for the data you will receive. So we do not have a funding for now. But maybe in the future we might have. But the whole project is very, very... The data, that, the data subscription is exactly the rate you use for your Facebook or other social media handles. So it doesn't really consume so much. Okay, I see. So at this point, we do to like a workshop with other people and the conference or presentation. We are not yet at the point. Oh, I didn't get you, please. Repeat, repeat. Uh, I said, I said, if you are, you organize some workshop or 
if you do some content, election content. Uh, okay, we normally meet online. Uh, we don't, like I said, we don't have the funding to travel across the country to hold workshops and uh, uh, to educate the public more. We just meet the students online, you know, educate them about the project. So that is because we have uh, limited resources for now. But we have workshops like on, we are preparing for um, our project, uh, we call Asteroid Day, coming up on 30th of this month. We are preparing seriously for it. We're going to have so many people joining in the meeting. We're going to be discussing about this project because it's an international uh, 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 international day for asteroid search. Asteroid, uh, asteroid awareness. You said when? When, when is that event? June 30th. Okay, okay. Towards the end of this month. But I saw on this website you sent that we, we need to do some registration. Yes, uh, you're going to register, but that is not the problem. Registration is not going to be the problem. Well, because I told you it's coming up on August. So during that time, we shall register your team. I will give you the form. You will fill the form. I will show you where to download the form. You will fill the form. Then you will submit it. But the most important thing is to acquire these skills. Practice and get prepared because two months is still, is still far. Uh, at least it's still far because we still have to connect with other groups from Africa to join into the project. So we still have to prepare those other people within this time. I'm happy. I'm happy to hear this project. And, uh, yeah. So when we, when, when we prepare the seminar, we're going to we're going to send you the invitation link. Okay. Yeah. If I get another question by now, I will text you. I hope you you answer me. I cannot hear you. I could hear you for the first time, but it went off. I'm, I'm ending with my question. Okay. If I get another question, I mean, yeah. You, you send me your WhatsApp uh, number. I will, yeah. I will message you on WhatsApp and also add you to our general group. I'll add you to our general group. Okay. So thank you very much. All right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right, take care.